Alrighty, welcome to a high stakes vintage cube here. This is a, whoa, my mic is going nuts. This is a 64 player single elimination draft. So what this means is we do a draft, single limb. If you 3-0, you draft again. And if you 3-0, you win the tournament. So high stakes on Magic Online. And I'm going to either first pick the one ring, ponder, or reanimate. Not the most exciting first pick. There's also Wasteland, but I think that's worse. I think I'll take one ring. It's colorless. It's quite powerful. There's a lot of directions you can go with it. Okay, so if I had I taken Reanimate, I certainly would have taken Grief here, and I kind of wish I had done that given that Grief is in this pack. But <clears throat> I'm actually probably going to take Brain Freeze. I think Brain Freeze is a very strong kill condition. This card has gone up in my estimation. It's just not that hard to get the number of spells you need to kill, kill them with Brain Freeze. And being able to uh, draft around it from the beginning is nice. It also works nicely with Underworld Breach. So basically, if you start with Ring and Brain Freeze, you're definitely trending towards combo. The other option would be to still take Grief, but I don't think that's great. And I think Hallowed Fountain or Plateau are a lot worse than just taking Brain Freeze. Coalition Relic's not a card I'm super thrilled with. Thalia is good, but after first picking the one ring, it's, you're not really making a lot of moves with Thalia. Oh, this is great. I actually think Fast Bond has gone up a ton in value in this cube. There's just a lot more lands combos. Getting a third pick Fast Bond, which works nicely with both these cards, is pretty good. And the Grief, and while we're on the Grief train, if we had taken Reanimate Grief, probably take Atali here. Maybe Ophiomancer, maybe Metamorph, but I'm actually really happy taking Fast Bond because here I think we got to take the best card in the pack. So let's see what we can do. Oh, this pack's got some action. So there's Dream Halls, which does end up being good in this style of deck. There's Sahili, which is good. Probe, which is good. There's also Urza Saga, and Urza Saga is such a busted card. Obviously, I don't have any artifacts to go get with it yet, but it's just not hard to make this card very good. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's not inconceivable that Dream Halls could wheel here. I'm not gonna like make big plans about it, but it definitely could. Okay, so this pack, I've got some options. There's a blue green talisman, which is nice. I have blue and green cards and a four drop to ramp too. There's Cryptic Command, which is actually really nice with the one ring because you can bounce the one ring, like tap all their creatures, bounce the one ring, replay the one ring. It's like you get multiple turns of fogs and reset the one ring. There's Augur of Autumn that goes with Fast Bond, but I don't think Augur is that good. I like Corsair a lot more in these style of decks, and I've just been kind of unimpressed with Augur. There's also a Primeval Titan. There is also Raugrin Triumph, Red, White, Blue, but I think that that is worse than just taking Talisman, and it's really between Talisman and Cryptic Command for me. And I think they're close, but I think Cryptic is just less replaceable. Okay, so this pack has Spellseeker, which can go get Brain Freeze, and maybe you can get something good later. There's also Basalt Monolith, which is good in this style of deck. It also has the infinite mana combo with Kinan or Zerda. There's Hard Evidence, which I actually like in some decks, but I think here I'd rather take Spellseeker. There's also Thrag Tusk and Elvish Reclaimer, so red seems to be getting cut, but blue seems fairly open. I'm thinking I just take Spellseeker here. Having a backup Brain Freeze can be really, really good when you're uh, trying to assemble combos. And I have now Urza Saga and Spellseeker, so getting them both early means... First of all, I'm hoping to open power. Any power is great. Saga can get all of them, or spells... Between Spellseeker and Saga, you can go tutor for every piece of power. So I'm really set up for that. But also, uh, just knowing that I have these cards means that I can draft around them in a way that's pretty strong. All right, so we got some good combo potential here. So now, wow, because now we have Upheaval, which is actually really good with Fast Bond. And the One Ring, you reset the One Ring. There's Sensei's Divining Top, which is great with Urza Saga. There's also Chrome Host Seed Shark. It's a shame because technically we're going to get one card back here. It's probably going to be like Invasion of a Courier or Savine's Reclamation. I really like Upheaval, but I think Sensei's Divining Top is actually so strong in these decks, and I can already get it with Saga. It's a really good combo with Mystic Forge. I think I just take the top. Oh, I'm going to take Zernorb for sure. I do like Charter Course and Pentad Prism, but starting with Fast Bond and Zernorb and the Zernorb's Fetchable with Urza Saga means if I get Ramanop Excavator or Crucible of Worlds, I can gain infinite life. So definitely taking Zernorb there and following it up maybe with Aetherflux Reservoir. If you cast enough spells, the Reservoir just goes, goes pretty hard here. 
Uh, let's move these all over one here because we got we got some zeros in the mix. So let's see. Yeah, I think it's the reservoir. I don't think scrubland looks all that good right here, and I'm not that worried about uh, missing out on Thief of Sanity or whatever, Voice of Resurgence. All right, so here we could take Hallowed Fountain. There's not that many white cards you end up playing. It is a better land than Spire Bluff, so I think I would still take Hallowed, given I don't know which color I have. I could also take Portal to Phyrexia, because if I get Tinker, Portal to Phyrexia becomes very appealing. There's also Baral, but this isn't looking super Baral-like. I think I'm going to spec on the portal here. All right, now, interesting. Do I take Ugin here as a big mana sink? Or do I just take Bazaar? I kind of think I just take Bazaar. I don't know how likely it is that I use Bazaar, but it's good with the One Ring. Once you have a lot of cards, it finds more cards. And it uh, can be good with like Life from the Loam. It's good with replaying lands from your graveyard effects. Okay, so Dream Halls didn't wheel, but Sahili and Talisman both did. And I think I'd rather take Sahili. Red Black Talisman is okay, but Sahili I've found can do some really good stuff. Oh, Blue Green Talisman Wield. I like that more than Opposition, even though I did take Sahili. Also, it's a really late Phyrexian Revoker. All right, Elvish Reclaimer could be good. Oh, we got an Escape last. That's actually not 0% that we would play Escape. Okay, this is a good start. We have a lot of like threads and we need something to tie them together, but right now we're open to the Crucible Ramanop Fastbon Orb plan. Draw sevens with fast bond are great. Uh, Tinker would be great in this deck. Tolarian Academy and Urza, like basically all the busted combo cards and all the lands cards have potential given what we have. And that's part of the reason I actually like taking fast bond so much is that fast bond, uh, it goes off with a lot of different things. Okay, so here we've got Frantic Search and Lotus Petal and Breeding Pool, but we also have Demonic Tutor. And even though we don't have black mana yet, we can get there. Spellseeker for DT is kind of nice. Also, when you have Zern Orb and Fast Bond, and, and maybe you get the Crucible, basically any three card combo gets a lot better when you have a Demonic Tutor. Let's see. Guide three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, there's a chance that like I wheel, probably not a very big chance I wheel Frank Search. People tend to take that card, but. <clears throat> I think between Lotus Petal and Breeding Pool, it's not 0% not that I'll wheel one. Okay, so this pack has Kiki Jiki. We're not doing that. This is not that great of a retrofitter deck. Any deck with Urza Saga is probably interested in retrofitter. There's Teferi Time Raveler, but I just took a black card, so uh, just take the escape out for the moment. I don't think I need to take that. Helm of Awakening, I would probably play in this deck, but I don't need to take it right here. I think there's a good chance that'll wheel. So really what I'm looking at is Retrofitter, Foundry, or Flash, or Teferi. I don't think I want Xander's Lounge as much as those cards. So Retrofitter, Foundry works out nicely if I pick up Tolarian Academy or Urza, or Gaia's Cradle, especially with Sahili. I have a lot of mana that way. Flash is great because I have Spellseeker, and if I get World Spine Worm or Triplicate Titan, Flash can be pretty good. And then Teferi is just a generically good card. I think with Urza's Saga, I'm more inclined just to take Retrofitter here. Oh, there's the Telerian Academy. Perfect. Uh, there's also Wheel of Fortune, which I think is great, but given that I have both Sahili and Retrofitter to make lots of tokens, and even Elvish Reclaimer to maybe go get it if I go that direction, I'm going to take Telerian Academy here. E Aetherflux Reservoir also works nicely here, so we'll take Telerian Academy. We'll probably follow it up with a Sheldock Isle. I think Sheldock is fantastic, and works nicely in this whole combo arena. Let's see. Bizarre is kind of like a zero mana spell. It's not really a land. The other option would be to take like Enlightened Tutor, but you'd have to splash white or Golos, which Golos would be good, but I think Sheldock is just such a broken card. Oh, there's Underworld Breach. We already have the Brain Freeze. Okay. There's also Kinan, but we passed on the Basalt Monolith. But yeah, we're going to take Breach now. And now that we have Demonic Tutor, Brain Freeze, and Breach, like... Our mana needs a little work here, but I really like get it, picking up Breach here. We haven't seen Lion's Eye Diamond yet, and if Lotus Petal wheels, we don't even need the Lion's Eye. All right, this pack is a bit of a brick. There's nothing here I really want. Mm, I don't even like Dig Through Time very much, given that I have Underworld Breach in my deck. I guess I could take Season Pyromancer, even though I really don't think I'm going to play it. This Graven Cairns is not a good fixer for this style of deck. I mean, I, there's also Holebreaker Horror, I guess. 
which you could like shell dock out or academy out. Maybe I am probably a little more likely to play Holebreaker Horror. Okay, so this pack has a Talisman, it has an Oath of Druids, it has a Remand. It also has Snap. Snap is kind of nice with Academy and Sheldock to untap, and even Urza Saga. But Remand is just, just too strong, I think, to pass up. So, okay, I don't think... Eh, maybe we'll run Reclaimer. We have four different spell lands to go get. We could still be playing the Crucible thing if we get one of those. We haven't passed any of those. We... Basically, on our hit list now are Lion's Eye Diamond's probably number one, <clears throat> but Crucible of Worlds is very close behind that. Uh, Red White Talisman's still fine. I don't think I'm going to play Devoted Druid or Urti Resurrected, or at least I'm not excited about the prospect. Okay, so that's this whole pack. We're not seeing new cards now. So Lotus Petal didn't wheel, which is sad. There's Days and Imperial Seal. Oh, uh, there's no. The problem is there's no one in Red Aggro. Other, otherwise, I think there's there's a bigger chance it could have wheeled. I didn't think Frantic Search was that likely to. Uh, not the best Days deck in the world. I could Imperial Seal here. I really kind of hate Imperial Seal. But when you do have Breach Brain Freeze, it's not bad. Is this deck going to play enough Islands for Days? I think I'd rather take Imperial Seal. Okay, Helm of Awakening wheeled. Helm is really nice with Sensei's top. <clears throat> if you have a Mystic Forge, it can also be good with Underworld Breach, just making everything cheaper. There's also just taking Thirst for Discovery, though. And I think, given the where this deck is, I think I would rather take Thirst for Discovery. I don't think making Brain Freeze a little cheaper is quite as good. Oh, wow. Turnabout Wield, sort of Vendillion Click, <clears throat> and Urza, which makes all your spells cheaper. Also, there's a Crater Hoof there. I think this deck is more inclined to just take Turnabout. I will take Enlightened Tutor. You never know. And I don't think I need to take Razor Verge over that. Oh, wow. So now there's Sakura Tribe Elder and Expressive Iteration. And a Black Green Land. <clears throat> All of these are viable picks here. I don't love the Fast Lands that much. I think I'm just going to take Iteration. Iteration's great. Kinchin Finks is a sideboard card. Yeah, no one's playing that. All right. Any Black Lotuses? Any Lion's Eye Diamonds? I think Imperial Seal and Enlightened Tutor are not that likely to make the cut. We could just be blue-green, uh, splash, red-black or something. I don't know. Okay, so this pack has Thoughtseize and Fury. We're not really into that. This just actually isn't as much a Narset deck as you might think. I mean, Narset is definitely good, but I don't have any draw sevens. And this deck, yeah, it would play draw sevens, but it's not going to be the highest priority. I'm kind of wondering if I should just take Tropical Island here. Just in an attempt to make my mana a little better. Mana Confluence is kind of painful, especially with Fast Bond. But taking Trop... Man, Narset is probably better than Trop. It fetches all these different cards. Yeah, I'll take the Narset here. That's fine. Whoa, this pack has Mana Drain and Library and Jace. And World Spine Worm for the Flash. Uh, I'll probably just take Mana Drain, though. If I can take, I mean, maybe not play Reclaimer, minimize the green for Fast Bond, hopefully pick up a Crucible to go with it. Have Right now I have two red cards, one black card, one green card, and the rest are blue. So we can, we can set up a Mana Drain situation. Oh, wow. So here has Strip Mine and Flooded Strand. Currently, Flooded Strand doesn't get me anything I need. Blood Crypt is also an option. I could take Strip Mine and then just hope in the next five picks... A Crucible of Worlds or Ramanop shows up? That actually sounds pretty reasonable to me. I, I think that there's a good chance if, if that gets open, no one else is going to take it. Okay, this pack has Emery. We're not really an Emery deck. Don't need Yogwell. Red Blue Talisman would be totally fine because my Talismans, I have a Blue Green, which is nice, and I have a Red White, which is kind of just like a Red Talisman. Faithless Looting, I don't like the idea of Faithless Looting that much. The question is, does this deck want Grim Monolith or Red Blue Talisman more? I think those are the two cards I'm deciding between. I'm kind of thinking Grim Monolith might be better. It's just generally a more powerful card. Casting the One Ring is nice. Yeah, I think I'd rather take that. All right, this pack has not a whole lot I'm super interested in. This is my fifth pick. That is 34, yeah, this be 35. Three more picks to, to hit Crucible. I was hope this is the kind of pack where I'd hope to take a land out of, but I guess I guess I'm just taking Karn. Karn, I think, could be decent here as well. 
not looking like a high tide deck. I, I guess I just have turnabout to untap my lands. Yeah, Karn is a good mana mana drain sink anyway. Wow, there's a parallax wave, but the rest is a brick here. Unfortunate. Uh, I don't have the Dream Halls is gone, so I'm not crueling. Doesn't make sense to take Parallax Wave. I guess I could just take Duress for the control matchups. Okay, well, this pack has a Prismatic Vista, so at least I'm getting that. And then I have one pack left to maybe get Crucible. That's a shame. But Prismatic Vista is going to be very good here. The thing is, I have the Strip Mine and the Fast Bond. Like, no one else, I think, is in a position to take Crucible, but sometimes the card's not open. Sometimes someone specs on it early. You never know, right? This point, Bizarre Baghdad's also not looking playable. And the Vista helps a lot. I have two Talismans and a Vista for mana fixing, but I also, my mana requirements just really aren't crazy. And I have Thirst, Remand, Iteration, and Narset, plus Sensei's Dividing Top as ways to look at extra cards. Okay, no Crucible. Misha's Workshop with two fours and three twos, plus some zeros, nah. I could take red, black, green land. That might be better than taking time warp or talisman. I think a red, black, green land, it just fixes all three of my splashes because I'm mono blue splashing a green card, a black card, and two red cards. So I think that's fine. This pack has the mana confluence and a memory jar. So memory jar, memory jar is pretty strong. I, I think I will take memory jar. I, it's not even, that's less about hating Mana Confluence and more that I think Memory Jar, it just, it decks them so quickly with Brain Freeze. And a draw seven to make Fast Bond good, I think is is legit. Okay, so right now this would be 17 land. I, I kind of want to play 18 land in this deck. So we'll see what we end up cutting. I think the Aetherflux Reservoir is actually fine here. It's a good way to gain life for Fast Bond, which is nice. I think Retrofitter is decent. I mean, I have Academy and Saga. I think Academy is still good in this deck. I didn't pick up quite as many artifacts, and I got none of the zero mana artifacts, sadly, like any mocks or whether it be Chrome, Diamond, or whatever. Trinket Mage can go get Retrofitter, Top, and Zuron Orb. Okay. I'm not going to play Beaumont Courier. I think I'll, I'll take the Trinket Mage here. I don't know that I'll be playing it necessarily. Hmm... Pass on that. I mean, maybe this is 17 land, but like a lot of them are like kind of spell lands, so I really wouldn't hate playing an 18th. Having a five color land and a three color land does help with fixing, especially combined with the two talismans. I'm not feeling too bad about that. I wonder if turnabout is good. It's basically only good if I draw academy, and the academy is tapping for three or four mana. Though. Between Sahili and Retrofitter, if I do draw Academy, I think a lot of the times it's going to be tapping for a lot. I don't, I'm not going to cut any of the card draw or counters. So it's turned about better than another land. Oh, Tamio is interesting. So Tamio gets a card back from my graveyard to my hand. Well, I'm not going to play Scrapwork Mutt in this deck or Mishra's Factory, so let's take that. Oh, this also could be an Emery deck. I don't really want to try casting Omnath. <clears throat> Would I play Emery in this deck? Yeah, I think so. All right. And it wouldn't be crazy for this to be a high tide deck, I guess. I don't think it's going to be, though. Let's say take out Tamiyo, put in Emery. What if we put in the high tide as well? Oh, mine's Desire, huh? Okay. Now well, let's, let's see where we're at. I think we're three cards over. Maybe four, depending, which is going to be kind of tough to, to cut here, depending on where it's going to have to decide. I guess Mind's Desire is probably not in. I kind of like everything else, though. Spellseeker seems like it's good enough. Would have killed for a Crucible, really. Is Karn Sign of Urza good enough? I kind of feel like it is. Even a Lotus Petal would have been awesome. Obviously, LED would have been nuts. Because currently, we can still Brain Freeze them out. It's not that hard to do it. It just... It's a lot harder than if you just had Lion's Eye providing mana for free. It's possible that Expressive Iteration, given the, the state of the mana that I ended up with, maybe Expressive Iteration isn't isn't where I want to be, though it is nice that Spellseeker can go get it. I guess it can also just get Demonic Tutor. So this is currently 
15 land. And I think I want to play 17. I don't I don't think I'm going to play 18. I think I'm going to play 17, which means I need to cut two, which kind of makes me want to cut. Do I cut this Zern Orb? I really do like Zern Orb. I can Emery it. I can Saga it. Gains me life for one ring and fast bond. Let's look at the mana base. It's certainly possible that high tide is just bad here. Like I could maybe cut high tide and iteration. Though once I cut high tide, maybe I just cut turnabout at that point as well. And end up with a bit of a four color combo situation here. But again, one green card. One red card, one black card, and then maybe a second red card. The rest of the cards are blue, so that my mana is really not going to be that bad, especially with Vista and Proven Ground. Like, imagine I play a forest, a mountain, a swamp, and then the rest islands. Let's see, so for forest, that would leave me with three sources plus the talisman, so four sources. For black, it would leave me with also four sources. And for red, it would also leave me with four sources. And then blue, let's say if I if I play 17 lands, I play those three, so four, six, nine, eight islands, eight, nine, 10, 11 blue, and uh, plus one talisman. Oh wait, this isn't a black green, sorry, one less black source. Yeah, maybe, well, we'll see. We'll see if I wanna play one extra swamp or maybe, I think iteration probably gets cut at that point. I mean, I could also cut High Tide and Turnabout. Though Mana Generation, I think I think Turnabout for Mana Generation is going to be good. With eight islands, I'll have basically nine islands in my deck because Sheldock and Academy don't count. There's also a possibility I just don't play Strip Mine. I ended up with no ways to recur it. It is nice to just, when you have Fast Bond out, to just be able to spend a land drop to set them back a turn, though. Because the other thing I could do is I could change my mana a little bit to either play Elvish Reclaimer out of green or Imperial Seal out of black. I'm not sure if I want to change my mana to do either of those things. Is everyone... Uh, we all have our packs. But, oh, I guess this is a 64-player event. They're waiting for all the drafts to finish for deck building at the same time. Sure. The other question is, is Aetherflux Reservoir where I want to be? I think so. I think that's good. How many artifacts do I have? Three, six, nine. But Urza Saga kind of counts as 10. Sahili certainly counts as 11. And then both Sahili and Retrofit are, I mean, they, they actually make multiple artifacts. Plus Emery kind of makes artifacts. So I think the Academy is going to be good here. I wish this deck had closed the loop a little more. I didn't get a Crucible or a Ramen Up. I didn't get a Lion's Eye Diamond. Like, it would have been nice to to kind of close the loop on either of those combos. Instead, I have, like, some half combos. The Brain Freeze one still works totally fine. Underworld Breach Brain Freeze on six mana, you can often kill them if you have, like, you know, you play Zern Orb, you play Breach, you play Top, you Brain Freeze for 12, you Brain Freeze for, again for 15. That's, like, enough. Um, but Zern Orb plus Fast Bond without Crucible isn't that great of a combo. I do have one draw seven in Memory Jar, and the one ring also draws you a lot of cards, so I certainly have uh, the capability of doing of doing uh, some, some busted stuff, but not having the full-on combos is a little annoying. So the other question is, because we're, we're basically building our deck now, do I want to play more than one Swamp, one Forest, one Mountain? Because, again, with Swamp, that leaves me with three black sources for Demonic Tutor, because neither of these Talismans make it. And But for f red and green, it means I have four sources of each. Yeah. And that and that leaves me with eight, nine, ten blue sources plus to learn Academy plus Talisman. So it's possible I could cut one island and play, like, one more Swamp just to make it a little more likely that I get to Demonic Tutor. All right, I think I think we've got a deck. Uh, let's get to deck building, see how it goes. All right, there we go. Uh, so yeah, I think this is what I'm gonna submit here. This, I do have a lot of blue requirements. I guess I could see going down to six islands. There'd be six, seven, eight, nine blue plus academy, which can often do more. 
in in order to play like a second mountain just because casting breach is so good but no i have enough sources I'm, this isn't like an early game play anyway the other option would be to try to get in high tide maybe and mind's desire there's also trinket mage i really wish i had picked up a mana artifact Whoa. what's going on there um Part of what, what is really a bummer in this deck is I'd never saw, not even like an actual Mox, even like a Mox Diamond or Mana Vault or something like that. My Urza Saga can't get mana and neither can my Trinket Mage, which makes me a little hesitant to include Trinket Mage. I think that this deck is did not end up that great. Like, I like some of the stuff that's going on for sure, and there's... Certainly, I can believe this deck can pick up some wins. I mean, it's capable of a turn one kill, right? You open on the right fast bond draw with Breach and stuff like that. Brain Freeze, maybe you can go go nuts or turn two one ring and draw a bunch of cards. But we just were missing even like a Mystic Forge. Like I just had all I had all the the kind of like the I had a bunch of outs to a bunch of different combos. Like I, I but I never picked up the final piece in any of them. So. I think I'm gonna run it like this. We'll see how this goes, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe we'll run a little good. All right, time for round one here. Let's see. Will will Jank combo do well? Well, with hands like this, I think so. Look at this. Turn one retrofitter. Turn two. Academy Zuranorb Talisman. Make a retrofitter token. Turn three Karn, make like a six six seven seven construct on the play. I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. Let's see what my opponents got. They have a handful of seven cards. Eh, just play this. Why not? I think just playing the Zorn Orb there is fine. In case they like strip mine my island or something. All right, no play, huh? Academy. Talisman, and now we're off to the races. Because now, next turn, Academy is going to tap for four mana to begin with. Uh, I'm going to get to. I'm going to plateau, huh? If this red white aggro, that could be tough. I'm going to get to Karn here. Hopefully, I don't have a way to blow up some artifacts. I braid my retrofitter. What a shame. All right, well, we're not going to get to go off, off, but this is still going to be pretty good, I think. Karn, make a 4-4. Four, four. I guess I'll play a Swamp. Send for one. And then next turn, I can Karn, make a 5-5. Five, five. But yeah, if they didn't have the Abrade, I would have been able to start making multiple tokens a turn with Retrofitter, and like that gets out of control super fast. So what I'm looking for now, Memory Jar would be a pretty good one. Emery would be solid, though I think there's a good chance they can kill the Emery. They need to have a burn spell for Karn here, or they're in a lot of trouble. If they kill Karn and, and then I draw a couple more lands, then yeah, I'm not going to be loving my spot. Demonic Tutor, also a great draw. In fact, I have access to red, black, green. So I have all of my colors here. <clears throat> We're just short on a little bit of action. Thirst would be great. Any of those cards. And it all starts also with them killing Karn. Because if they can't kill Karn, if their play is like play a creature or something, then I like my spot a fair amount. Seasoned Pyromancer. All right. So that's not the scariest play this turn, discarding Plains and Batter Skull, but it does mean that Next turn, there's a decent chance they have a way to kill Karn. Oh, they're killing Karn now. Yeah, so we're going to kill Karn in my servo. Yep, yeah, I guess that's me down to square one here. Had a great start, but this is definitely a problem. All right, action? <laughs> kind of. Uh... It's just past the turn here. I mean, I have access to seven mana to their three, now four. So hopefully that means something. But now they're slamming a four drop. Chandra. Yeah, there's, every turn they just kill my best permanent. 
which is going to make it a little hard to win here. Okay, take two, draw. <laughs> uh, a little late on that, huh? I'm going to wait on the Sahili because I'm still at 18. I'm not taking tons of damage. Though. Obviously, if they play a Dragon or Hell Rider or something, that'll change quickly. They exile the Talisman of Hierarchy. Okay. So they're like more red-white mid-range is what it looks like than, than aggro. I mean, all these cards they've played are fine in aggro, except maybe Talisman. But they look a little bit slower. Okay, we'll see how things look when we go to sideboarding. And Blade Splicer. All right, well, if I draw any non-creature spell, I can place a Healy this turn. Oh, that's interesting. That can get Demonic Tutor. So let's see, I can place a Healy, play Spellseeker, but I can't Demonic Tutor in the same turn. So let's go Spellseeker for Demonic Tutor. And then Demonic Tutor with two mana left. I could get Memory Jar. I could get the one ring. I'm at 15. Next turn, let's say I block the Golem. I'll take four to 11, charge it down to nine. I could get Emery, but that seems... Emery seems like a little bit ambitious here. How close am I to brain freezing my opponent out next turn? If I cast Breach, I can brain freeze. If I cast, I could cast Sahili, cast Breach, turn the token into a talisman, and then brain freeze twice for nine plus 12, 21 cards. Okay, and I'm at 15. Yeah, that actually seems like the plan. And then they are gonna draw to 22 cards, and then they're probably gonna plus Chandra and exile their top card. I would be kind of surprised if that wasn't their play, unless they have like a seven mana play, which seems a little less likely. Okay, that this requires them not to blow up in my artifacts this turn. But that seems, seems doable. Oh no, they added red. <laughs> Disaster, okay. Uh, I might be able to still just hold off on a turn here. Let's see, what are they going to do with Gideon? Are they just immediately going to emblem Gideon or something? Because let's say I block the 3-3. Three, three. Oh, Robber of the Rich. Okay. I take 6 down to 9. They exiled Sheldock Isle. That's fine. I didn't really want to block it. I didn't draw it anyway. All right, I'll block the first striker. I mean, I go to 9 here, but I'm really at 19, because I have 5 lands to sacrifice to Zurin Orb. So, I might be okay here. Alright, plus if I draw uh, anything cheap to play, that could give me an extra spell. Oh, I think Emery... Alright, let's see. Sahili, cast Breach, make a third artifact. Cast Emery, down to 2 mana. Sahili, cast... Oh, wait, wait. I've got a better idea. Sahili, cast Breach, cast Retrofitter out of the, make the token into a Talisman, tap it for one to cast Retrofitter. Yeah, that, that should be good. All right, let's go Sahili. Underworld Breach, take one going to eight, make a token. Sahili, this artifact becomes a talisman. Um, Zernor of an island. I even have a demonic tutor if I needed it. Cast retrofitter, tapping the talisman, exiling these three. Make another. Make, make another token. Tap this for five mana. Play Emery. Yeah, no, I can just brain freeze them for a million here. Okay, we, we assembled a, a, a dub here out of uh, <laughs> a, the, quite the amalgam of cards here. And they're not the kind of deck that is going to be playing uh, Eldrazi. So I feel like this should be more than enough. In fact, they should just scoop it up now before I see additional cards. 
Okay, Swords to Plowshares. So they have Fury, Swords to Plowshares, Wasteland. That's an annoying one. Oh, Fiery Confluence, Smuggler's Copter, Mox, and Mana Crypt. Wow, their deck is really good. All right. I would say we're underdogs in any individual game, but because of the fact that we're up a game, I think we're still ahead in the match. Just not by as much as I would like. And exile these three and brain freeze you for the rest. I don't know why they're showing me all these cards. Knowing about Fiery Confluence is, is, is good. Knowing about Mox and Mana Crypt just makes me feel bad. Uh, do I want Kitchen Finks? Their deck is good enough that I don't think I want to contort my mana to play Kitchen Finks. I mean, I like Escape to the Wilds, but again, the mana issue. Yeah, I don't even think we change anything, honestly. I guess I could put in like a Trinket Mage. The fact that they have Fiery Confluence and a Braid is making me kind of unhappy. Do I want to cut Emery? That's one question, because they have Swords to Plowshares, which has no other targets. Chandra, I mean, I guess no other targets. They have Karn tokens. Chandra, I think Emery might still be good enough, but one thing to note is that if I mill my Breach, I don't have any way to bring it back. I have no reshuffles, which is kind of unfortunate. I guess I could board in Tamio for that kind of matchup. I don't want Imperial Seal. I don't want Duress. Lighten Tutor. Would I rather have Trinket Mage over Emery, I guess, is kind of the question. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling like Emery is not that likely to work out. Let's just tr let's try the Trinket Mage instead. All right. On the draw here, this is this is where all the power went. <laughs> a Mox and a Mana Crypt is, is tough. That just means that one of these games, maybe two of them, they're just going to have Mox and Mana Crypt in their opening hand. And um, just have these starts that I can't really compete with. Like, I have to keep a hand like this, and it's a little slow. I don't know. I don't think I'm supposed to mulligan this hand. I can uh, Demonic Tutor for Brain Freeze at some point. I also... Just having Demonic Tutor means that I can at some point go Breach, DT, Brain Freeze. So that means I can fire off Demonic Tutor for maybe... Well, I would like to Demonic Tutor at some point for Telerian Academy, but probably not going to be in a position to do that with this hand, I'm probably going to go Proving Ground into Island, DT for like maybe Grim Monolith or something. Just some some sort of way to generate more mana is going to be kind of the idea. Let's see what they're up to. They kept their seven. Okay, no, no mocks, no Mana Crypt. Oh, I don't mind a Trinket Mage here, actually, because now, now I'm kind of tempted to DT for Academy. Okay, it wasn't. We weren't so lucky that they didn't have a two drop. Karizev, sure. Mm. Yeah, let's demonic tutor. I'm just gonna get Tolarian Academy. So what I'm gonna do here is go trinket mage on three for a retrofitter foundry, and then turn four Sahili play retrofitter. Okay, I take three. They didn't make any tokens off the pyro, which is nice. Uh, let's play the island, I guess. Trinket Mage. And this provides a blocker. And now, Sahili make a retrofitter token, or Sahili play retrofitter, make a token. Because of Wasteland, I'll slow roll the academy still. I'm going to go to 14 here because I'm going to block the pyro. They're down to four cards. If they don't have a big Planeswalker this turn, that would be nice. They have a Talisman. Okay, that's a pretty weak play as far as plays go. I've drawn all lands so far. That's not ideal. Uh, let's play a land. Sahili. What is this? Oh, Reprieve. Uh, I don't think I even play the Retrofitter then, because next turn I can go Sahili, play Retrofitter, make a token, play Academy, make another token off of uh, the Retrofitter. Crucible of Worlds to go with their Wasteland, I guess. They took my Crucible. It's terrible in their deck. <laughs> I'm so happy they spent three mana on Crucible. What a beating, though. It, it feels like there's a decent chance they have a braid here. I would really love to draw Zernorb, actually. 
That would make this turn really nice. Not land, though, I'll take. Oh, Urza's Saga. Huh. I don't think I play... Oh, that's tough, actually. So let's say I go Sahili, Retrofitter. Yeah, I think... I think I'm going to have to hold off on the Urza Saga because this gets me an extra token doing it this way. So I think I'd rather do that because now I can tap the Retrofitter in the Academy to make a token. And they get to crack Mesa. Oh, they're not even thinning their deck. Don't have Wasteland, please. They, if they had Wasteland, I was going to say they would have played it last turn, but sure. So they must have just drawn the Wasteland. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, this is now going to be pretty awkward because I don't really have a way to play a Saga. I guess I just have to just play Basics from here on out. I might cut the strip mine going to game three. Knowing that they have Crucible and they're just two colors with a bunch of duels, like they have two fetches and a plateau at the very least, I mean, and they're an aggro deck, means I'm a little less inclined to want strip mine. Then again, if I'm on the play, sometimes strip mine can just be good. So Sahili's on five. I mean, this isn't the end of the world because I do get to, to thirst for discovery. It's a shame that Breach can't let me replay Academy though. Because I'm going to need to figure out a way to get to six to eight mana to to breach here. Luckily, my mana base is mostly basics. Grim Monolith would really help here. But the Wasteland kind of locks me out of uh, Saga. This Vista has to get Mountain probably too. Nahiri killing Sahili, sure. Yeah, I think, and they're just gonna attack me now. Mm, I'm gonna go to eight. I don't love it, but I think that's okay. Okay, Mana Drain's actually pretty good. Let's just go Island Go here. And see what they're going to do. They're probably going to Wasteland the Zeotaur's Proving Ground. And then I'm going to use that to cast uh, Thirst for Discovery. And that can just discard Urza Saga plus another card. Doesn't really matter. Okay, Thirst. Because the Urza Saga is just not going to do much here. Or I could just discard a basic. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just discard a basic. Because the second card I would discard is still probably the, the island, so I might as well just do it this way. This would be a turn where I wouldn't mind them playing a four or five mana spell. Chandra, Gideon, Glorybringer, whatever. Something expensive. Okay, yeah, perfect. Oh, Fiery Confluence. That was going to... Each creature, one, each two to me, and kill my Retrofitter. Well, I'm going to pass on that. Now I'm definitely going to take it because I have a Aetherflux Reservoir coming. So another spell. Ooh. Okay, so I have four mana floating. Let's go Reservoir. One spell. I'm going to get a mountain here. Memory jar, two spells, and now I'm probably going to have to do some blocking. I'm at six. All right, pass the turn here. Zernorb would still have been a good draw. At every point, Zernorb will have been a good draw. <laughs> this is close. I kind of wish now, given that I drew memory jar for my turn, I was hoping to draw a cheaper spell to play three spells. I kind of wish I had blocked with the servo last turn on the Rogavon. I'm currently at five. Glorybringer doesn't kill me though, which is nice. Glorybringer puts me to one. Mox, okay. Okay, that's not a big haster. We're definitely blocking the the rug of easy here. Going down to five. And they have two cards left in hand. Fiery Confluence is gone. A braid would still be pretty annoying. All right, I didn't do anything. Cryptic command. Interesting, interesting. So now I could play breach. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go Sensei's top, gain a life. I'm gonna risk an abraid here, I think. I'm gonna draw a card top. Oh, 
Grim Monolith is pretty good. How bad is it to give them seven cards? Don't think it's going to be that bad. We'll see. If I if if I get abraded or something, that would be annoying. What is this? A ret resto or something? A wandering emperor. Sure, I don't really care too much about that, honestly. And crack a fetch. I the fact that I have brain freeze somewhere in here could also lead to a dub. Okay. They're they're actually just jacking up the storm count a lot here. Oh wow, look, now I can go Zurin Orb. I'm just part of it is I just wanted to gain a ton of life off my Aetherflux Reservoir. No, they're abrading the reservoir. Oh, I have remand though. Yeah, let's just do that. Remand you. And they spent all this man on randomly casting swords to plowshares on my 1-1, one -one, so. <laughs> uh don't have enough mana to turn about here. But I'm at 13 now. I think I just go land. I don't care about strip mining. They even have Crucible in play. Gain four. Top, gain five. I'm at 22 now, and then I just pass the turn. And uh, we go back down to what we had before, which is not very much. They get to make a Wandering Emperor token. Just don't care. We discard. They discard a Braid, Burst Lightning. Oh, they didn't even Burst Lightning me. Robber of the Rich, Stoneforge. Okay, and then now they have one card in hand. I have no Wasteland targets, and they're only at 13 cards, so I can easily Brain Freeze them out next turn. I just get to go Grim Monolith, Breach, Demonic Tutor, Brain Freeze. They do get to attack me for six damage here. You can't, can't underrate that. Well, this was a uh, we we certainly punched above our weight class here. Their deck is a good red white deck with two pieces of power, mana crypts effectively power. Swords to plowshares, a braid, fiery confluence, you know, good mana. They did kind of mess up their deck by putting crucible. If imagine if the crucible this game was just like, you know, a spell of any kind that was good, <laughs> it would be a lot harder. All right. Um Grim Monolith Gain some life. Talisman. Gain some life. Zurner also means I always have enough mana to breach everything out of my graveyard, which is nice. Uh, let's go breach. And then brain freeze is inevitable. All right. 1-0 in the single limb. We made it to round two and beat a really good Boros deck on the way. I'll take it. Alrighty, time for round two. I am on the play. Let's go ahead and play first and totally legit hand. On the play, turn one, shell dock, turn two, mountain, talisman. If I uh, hit a land, then I'll probably just play Karn. If not, I'll play Thirst for Discovery. So that sounds like a great plan. And I guess I hit three lands in a remand, so I'll put a remand under the uh, <laughs> under the shell dock there. Eh. Not the worst. At least I didn't put an academy on the bottom. That That is a good one that I would like to see. Dark Slick Shores into nothing. Okay. Memory Jar was not a fantastic draw. But I would like to just hit a land next turn because just going Karn into a minus next turn minus make and cast Thirst would be a lot nicer. Though if they don't have a play, that would be nice too. Oh man, Grief Pitching Vampiric Tutor. Uh, I am almost assuredly going to get Double Grief this turn, which means they're going to take Thirst and Karn, and I'm going to be left with a handful of junk. Uh, so it goes. There's just not that many situations where my opponent's going to pitch Vampiric Tutor and not have the, the animate as a follow-up. What do we got? Oh, shocker. <laughs> Anime dead. Put that into play. Take your Karn. And I guess I just hope to draw... Like, land. I mean, they, it was like a two-for-two two kind of-ish. I don't know. Okay, land is good. Just pass here. 
Got no moves. But now if I draw a land, I can cast Memory Jar. Memory Jar could get me back into the game. So I do like that. That that seems pretty reasonable. Um, what do you got? Liliana of the Veil. Okay. Yeah, they're going to really punish my hand here. What's unfortunate is I really don't want to discard this Underworld Breach, but it's kind of hard to imagine how that's not going to happen because they're going to... I'm going to... If I draw a land, I play Memory Jar. I guess I just... The Breach just has to go. Because if I draw a land, I'm going to play the Memory Jar. Probably going to draw like a Zurn Orb or something. Yeah, I'll play Jar. Hopefully Blue Black can't interact with it. They'll make me discard the Breach, but I can still... I can still win with Brain Freeze. Especially with the Remand under Sheldock. If I set it up such that I go Brain Freeze, Remand, Brain Freeze, like I will be pretty happy with that. They discard Frost Titan? No. If their last card's another Animate spell, that's going to be so brutal for me. Okay, it does not appear so. Let's see what we draw. Urza Saga. Okay. I'm at 16. Liliana's on 5. I could play Saga. I could just crack Jar. The problem with playing Saga before cracking Jar is my fear is that if I do that and I draw Talarian Academy off the Jar, it's going to be pretty bad. So I think what I'm going to do here is just crack the Jar and kind of see what's going on. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I guess what's going on is fast bond into Aetherflux Reservoir. Land, land, land. Funny. Uh, all right, well, I mean, that that's just how, how, how it's going to happen, I guess. <laughs> and land and reservoir leaving up. I have Remand up because I can crack Prismatic Vista before Remanding, so. There we go. I guess that is, uh, I guess that is that. Now yeah, they get to dump a bunch of cards with Jar into the graveyard. I get Urza Saga back, which I guess they're going to make me discard with Academy. Oh, uh, yeah, that was, I guess, a drawback to that. They just drew Gristlebrand Thief of Sanity and Lands. I'm going to attack me on 10 here, and all right, I guess I'll take it. Plus Liliana, yeah, discard Urza Saga. I mean, they only have 20 cards in their deck, or 21. I think there's a decent chance I can get something going here. So I have Liliana on six. I think I just keep this in hand and they can they can split these in half I guess however they want I just don't really see it doesn't seem like it makes sense to do otherwise here okay they make me discard grim monolith that's fine they're they're I guess gonna set up a Liliana oh uh, they had to so what is their last card I guess we'll find out in a second here wrinkle all right well I'm gonna remand that and hope to draw some some kind of action here. I'm, I'm getting... Okay, so Mana Drain is actually okay because Mana Drain lets me... Uh, if, if I keep a card in hand, maybe I can Mana Drain here. I don't know, it's actually tough. That Liliana is really messing me up. Retrofitter Foundry would have been a good draw at some point, but it doesn't seem very likely that we're, we're doing that. Let's see. The, the Liliana is just a problem. Oh, okay, so Spellseeker, 20 cards. Let's see here. Let's go Spellseeker, gain a life, draw. I can get Demonic Tutor, and what can I do with that? I can Demonic Tutor for the One Ring. Oh, that's pretty nice, actually. If I Demonic Tutor for a One Ring, then it's target player. So then I get to go DT. I wish I had an extra mana, but maybe I'll maybe I'll actually will draw a land off the one ring. Okay, because now I DT for the one ring. 
We're actually going to crack this. Actually, no, I can still just draw an island off this. Play the one ring. I gain a ton of life off this turn. Draw. Island would be nice. All right. Well, I guess island, they would just plus one me anyway. All right. Well, swamp is fine because I can discard it. Okay. Okay. I, I actually like where we're at a lot here. Uh, the one ring, I think, is going to lead to a pretty solid little comeback. We get to stop a Liliana ult, and then one ring might be able to draw us into enough stuff to to find a uh, brain freeze. I'm going to get to draw some, some extra cards next turn. Maybe Spell Seeker could attack Liliana. I don't know about that. I guess they can make me discard two cards by playing Rankle, but I'm okay with that. That's not the end of the world. Let's see. One more mana would have been kind of nice, as it turns out. <laughs> but that's, that's you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. They have Rankle and Unknown. The other thing is if their Unknown is a decent card, then they have to discard it if they want to make that play. So I don't really mind that. I have left in my deck. I have a Brain Freeze, so I guess... The Liliana is annoying, but not the end of the world. We'll have to see see what we can do here to try to try to mitigate that, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I just wish I had a breach left in my deck. This game would be a lot easier if I did, but that's just that's just this deck. So sometimes you know it doesn't work out, and uh, in this particular case, I think not having not having breach around is is just the price I have to pay, I guess. Didn't pick up any time twisters or anything. So I'm going to draw three new cards. Yeah. There's a possibility that gets me gets me somewhere. They might not they also might not attack with uh grief because of the spell seeker attack Liliana, though I don't know how much they care about that. So, we'll have to see if uh this works. Reanimate. What do they get? Frost Titan. Okay. That's annoying. They do reanimate. Because now they're going to tap down the one ring. Yeah, now I'm probably going to lose. They're going to hit me for two. Draw. Lose a life. Narset. Interesting. So what can I do with Narset? I mean, I guess I can start by casting it. And I could Mana Drain. The Rankle, maybe. Oh, Cryptic Command. Okay, that's actually great. So now... Oh, wow, tapping the Talisman actually worked out kind of poorly. That's unfortunate. Um, because now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and Cryptic, I can bounce Liliana and tap their creatures on upkeep. Sadly, I don't have another blue to mana drain. And then I get, yeah, then I, I mean, I get rankled. Eh, that, I guess my Narset gets rankled and that's kind of annoying. Yeah, tapping the Talisman worked out really poorly. Uh, they know about cryptic, so if they, I think ulting is probably going to be bad for me. So let's just do this. Bounce, gain a life, tap those. So now I'm going to get to one ring again. They can hit Narset with Rankle though. It would have been a lot nicer if I could drain it. Okay, but between my draw step and uh, my ring, I might be able to to get something going here. So we'll we'll see if we can if we can do that. Mm -hmm. And let's see, draw. I guess I'll sack the vista. Why not? Draw. Okay, I lose a life. Proving ground. All right, let's do this. 
Okay, sensei's dividing top is interesting. So let's go sensei's top, spin the top. Now I think I can tap my black because my tutor's already used. So there's Brain Freeze Sahili. Oh, okay, okay. Storm count one. Storm count two. I can draw with top. Hold on, if I draw with top, how much mana do I have? And I cycle. I have, I haven't played a land yet. I have eight mana. So if I cycle, draw with top, cycle Proven Ground, play top as spell number three, how close am I to, to getting to uh, Brain Freeze them for six? I guess it starts, I could draw, draw with top, oh, hold on. Can I Sahili first? Oh, maybe I shouldn't have played the Zern Orb actually. Let's see, if I draw Sahili, I have to rearrange top, draw Sahili, go down to two islands, play Sahili. And then Sahili can turn into top storm count two, tops three. I'm getting to like five storm count. I'm not getting to I'm not getting to the number I need. Hold on, let's spin this again. Next turn, I'm at 17. So next turn the uh, let's see, I have seven, eight mana. Draw Sahili, Proven Ground go to two, or two mana floating. Draw with, draw the, I would draw the, the thing, play Sahili, so I'd be, have one mana left. So I can't do it this turn, I don't think. Seven, eight, cycle, Sahili, yeah. So I think I just passed the turn and try to set it up next turn with a combination of Sahili tops. All right, we'll see We'll see if we can do that. I think that might be difficult, but it is possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're gonna attack. Yeah, basically the, the one thing I wish I did differently is I shouldn't have played the Zern Orb. That, that, that could end up being a pretty costly mistake. So they're gonna tap down the one ring again. Here I'm gonna block the Frost Titan. I'm gonna take five down to 12. They can make me discard. I don't really care too much about that. I really hope they make us both pay a life and draw a card. Oh, dang. All right, discard a swamp. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then this is like a Liliana. This is Dothy Voidwalker. All right, well, I will mana drain that, I guess. Gain a life. Spin top. So, and I think I'm going to draw with top here, untap. Lose some life. So next turn I am taking pretty close to lethal. Let's go Sahili. Gain a life. Play top. Oh, I used my man, whatever. Um, let's auto yield. Auto yield. Storm count two. Um, now, I can make Servo into a top, draw with the original top, draw with the servo, play top. So I get to gain another life. Play that. So I storm count three. And now let's, I can get to storm count five pretty easily here. Is that right? Uh, yeah, playing that Zornor was really bad, but 
Does that mean we're out? No, let's see. We have six mana. We haven't played a land yet. Because right now I can draw with top, cycle proven ground, play top, brain freeze, so that's four for 15 cards. And is there a way to do even better? Let's see, if I if I draw with top, cycle, play top, play brain freeze, I have one floating, so I can actually still afford to look and see if there's anything. Okay, Tularian Academy. Let's draw. Let's cycle. Let's cast top. And so now what I what I get to do is now if if I can find a spell in the top in my top card like I, I i can tap academy i have enough mana so now i can look at this and if if i can find a spell here emery that'll do it draw play emery brain freeze you for six Whew. all right definitely didn't play this one perfectly but we ended up uh Getting there nonetheless. And that's that's gonna be a brain freeze for the whole deck here. Let's see if we can uh if we can get some some good value out of looking. Oh man, mind twist, thought seize. <laughs> I don't like every time seeing uh all these good cards. Mind twist, thought seize, mox diamond, we saw all those baleful strix. Alright, sideboarding here. I think Emery's actually good here. Tamiya will protect me against discard and sacrifice. Probably want to add one more green. And if I'm doing that, maybe I put in the elf as well. The elf on a shelf. And I take out turnabout. Turnabout's especially weak in this kind of matchup. And maybe I take out Aetherflux Reservoir. I don't know that my life total is going to be attacked in quite the same way. And it's going to be a kind of low resource game. If I had access to more black mana, I would be inclined to play escape to the, or sorry, more red and green mana, I'd be inclined to play escape. Trinket Mage, I also don't hate. Retrofitter Foundry is going to be one of my best cards, because if I can resolve it, they don't have a very easy way to get rid of it. So I'm looking at that. I don't need duress. I don't need like any of those things. Is there is there any way I can play escape? Because it'd be so good against that sort of thing, but I don't think so. I think Tamiyo is going to be that. One, two, three four, five green sources still. Yeah, maybe the Elvish Reclaimer is ambitious. Maybe instead of Reclaimer, let's just put in Trinket Mage because this gets Retrofitter Foundry, which is going to be, again, one of my best cards here. Okay. Well, this hand is great. This hand is good even against uh, discard. Opponent's mulliganing. Okay, okay. So far, we're 3-0 in games against decks that I think are better than mine, so... <laughs> We'll take it. All right. Put them all to six. Let's hope we don't get massively griefed. No. One drop artifact? No, but Spellseeker's not bad. I'm not going to play the Zernarb. They're not going to duress, duress it. I don't care if they do. Turn two, I'm going to play Talisman of Conviction in Urza's Saga. Okay, that's not a Dothy Voidwalker. Good, good, good. Uh, we're definitely still going to play Urza Saga and play Talisman and hope to find a uh, Tlaird Academy soon here. That would be a particularly juicy one. Okay, they've accelerated to four mana. What do they have for that four mana? Rankle? Okie dokie. Um, let's see what Rankle does here. Honestly, I could see almost. I could see any combination of the first and third, or first and second modes. Clearly, the, the third mode is not going to get chosen. Could you see both? Each player discards a card. All right, we're going to do that. We're going to play like that. I kind of think I discard Thirst for Discovery here. I don't think I'm going to have time to use that. Oh, good. They didn't discard a big creature, so they're not setting up a reanimate here. Draw Academy? No. All right. Well, now let's play Forest and Talisman. And then now we have Urza Saga ready. And I, I think I'll just discard the island now. I have five mana in play. 
Urza Saga is going to get a Retrofitter Foundry. So my opponent's got to have a decent play this turn, or I think they would have paid the life to draw a card on Rankle or done the, the each draw card mode. But Ledger Shredder, okay. And then, oh, they're going to make us each discard a card. Liliana, okay, they're getting aggro. I kind of hope they don't hit a non-land. Okay, good, they just hit a land. So I'm going to have to discard a bunch of cards here. Okay, discard island. And I think I might just dis discard Spellseeker now to this rankle. Because going Sahili plays Zernorb seems like it's pretty appealing. All right, I'll go to 14. And then they're going to choose each player discards a card. But I'm going to get to attack Liliana with my token, which is nice. Yeah, we don't have time to, to Spellseeker here. All right. And end of turn, let's make a token. Draw, let's see what we draw, Academy. Academy, I think, would like basically lock this game up. Oh, <laughs> I drew the Retrofitter, okay. So now, I think I just tap this for a colorless because I want to play all my cards out. Because if I make a token, I can't get mana with this, so Retrofitter, get top. Because I think I'd rather have Sahili out here now I get to go Zern or make a token. They get to Ledger Shred here. Okay, hit a reanimate, that's fine. And then now I'm just gonna attack Liliana, I think. I'm at 13. Okay, and then play Retrofitter, make another token. And I could, Sahili's so gonna die here, I think. No, I guess not, I can make a, I can make a token. So let's, let's actually plan on sacking a servo to make a 1-1 one -one flyer to block Rankle here. And then next turn, I'll probably use Sahili to make one of my artifacts into a construct and just attack for a million. So we'll do that. I mean, we'll see what they attack here. They oh, they played their land first, no cards? Oh, okay. I mean, if they attack, I think they might just die here. Um, Doctor block there. Now I'm going to tap top, yeah. So I was going to tap top to draw a card, play it, get up to 10 tokens, make a token, attack with two, two constructs. All right, 2-0, on to the finals here. All righty, time for round three. Let's see if the little deck that could, ooh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll take this one. On the play especially, we get to uh, go island, go, and uh, we get to leave up a turn two mana drain, which I do like. Let's see what we're playing against. White Weenie with a Mox on the draw here. Looks like White Weenie. Please not Thalia, oh. Cathar Commando, I guess. Interesting. I mean, if it is a Cathar Commando, I'm actually gonna mana drain it because Cathar Commando is kind of annoying. Okay. It can kill my Urza Saga. I don't want that happening. Okay, so now Adeline. Yeah, that's all right, but it's a lot less scary than if it was a there's a Cathar Commando in play. All right, now I get to play Urza Saga, play Karn, and here I think I'm gonna plus the Karn because otherwise we would be in a position where uh, Karn would get attacked down by. Adeline, which I don't really want to have happen. So let's go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. Are they going to give me Emery or Cryptic? It's actually kind of interesting. What, what do they give me here? We've got Emery, which I can't cast this turn, but obviously I'm playing an artifact deck versus Cryptic. All right. Well, they, they gave me, I, th I think, the right choice there. Okay. I pass. And let's see what they've got. Currently they can attack Karn for four if they make a token. Oh, they're just gonna, they chose Karn. All right, Karn, Karn down. 
I guess it wasn't going to be that easy. But they're down to two cards in hand thanks to uh, them. All these things happening at once. All right, let's go ahead. I drew, I want to make a token. If I make a token, I still can't cast Emery. So let's just play the Proving Grounds here and then pass. And see what they are up to. Umazawa's Jite. I don't love that. Because Jite means that now they're going to get to equip and my Urza Saga dreams are dismissed. Well, given that, might as well make a token and block the uh, the GTA'd up one. Okay, well, they had a little more disruption than I was hoping. But I have Breach DT, so I've got something to start with. Let's draw, okay, tap this for colorless. Retrofitter Foundry Sensei's Divining Top or Zurin Orb. I think, given where I'm at, I take the Sensei's top. Well, what am I gonna... I have one mana floating. Oh, I could Retrofitter in DT for Academy. Yeah, I kind of like that. Retrofitter Foundry. Demonic Tutor. I mean, I could also get the One Ring. I'm really not liking almost any of my options here, but I think Academy, I don't know, Academy's not really gonna work either, honestly. They, they've had a bit more disruption than I than I would have hoped to, to play against. So, let's pass. We can do some retrofitting. This is where not having Lion's Eye Diamond, of course, hurts. Otherwise, I would have been able to easily win this game. But, you don't got it, you don't got it. All right. Uh, Sword of Fire and Ice. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be a lot then. They get to equip. They get to attack. I'm going to make a retrofitter. Yeah, and they're going to kill it with the GTA before I get to block. Yeah. Uh, like I said, not not loving it. And then now I'm going to go to four. Yeah, this is probably what's going to happen. Oh, Grim Monolith is interesting. Yeah, I'm still very far. I guess I could have DT'd and searched differently with Saga, but that was a bit too much. Uh, against White Weenie. I actually don't mind mostly how I'm set up. So I kind of think this turnabout was just kind of weak, so I think I'd rather just have Trinket Mage in the deck. So we will try for that and see how how that ends up here. Yeah, I just have to have a fast draw, I guess. Hoping that's the case. Get to, I mean, that draw, they had the Council's Judgment for Karn, then the GTA. The GTA was really what caused the issue. I think I'd have been able to stall their board pretty easily without it. But with it, because I couldn't even get like the constructs off the board. Like imagine they didn't have GT to kill the first construct. I'd get the second, get a retrofitter, make a third. Then I'd have two four fours. So it went downhill fast, unfortunately. Um, but that is the, how it happens sometimes. And yeah. the other option would be to put in something like Holebreaker Horror. I wonder if that's better than Aetherflux Reservoir. Reservoir has been kind of medium. All right, let's try the Holebreaker Horror instead there. I don't think I want uh, High Tide still, though. That doesn't seem like the case. All righty, time for game two on the play. Oh, well, yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. Turn one, Retrofitter. Turn two, probably use the Retrofitter into uh, turn three, Sahili, and then one ring or cryptic, something along those lines. Let's see what my opponent's got. Mono white here. I've got some powerful fours, so I don't mind that too much. Um, we've got basically a Talarian Academy is kind of what, what I'm looking for here. If I can find that, I'll be pretty happy. Okay, they just played Retrofitter Foundry and passed. Uh, 
Floated Strand, I guess I'm probably going to... I'd rather use Retrofitter than uh, play Sheldock this turn, because Sheldock's not going to be active for a while. It's going to be good, but it's not going to be active for, for a while yet. Okay, so they're going to get a Hallowed Fountain tapped. That is totally fine. Three Burino, that's all you got? All right. It's a lot less fearsome than last game here. I think here I can afford to get a blue. Let's go Sahili. And pass the turn here. And then next turn we're going to play the one ring. Sahili is also a way to, to get out of the one ring if you need to. Uh, sword, oh, that's not going to do very much. Because uh, I've got a bunch of chump blockers here. Uh, yeah, attack Sahili for one, that's fine. All right, let's draw. Now let's go one ring. And draw, <laughs> Hallbreaker Horror, pass the turn. I've got some blockers. Okay, let's get back here. All right. And I'm not feeling too bad about this. Like, they get to equip sword and make me chump with servo, sure. They can play like an Adeline and I guess attack, but then I can double block Thraven. And then I'm going to start to get to go off with one ring pretty hard here. They just had a really slow start. Turn two Thraven Inspector, turn three Sword of Fire. This is just not a draw. That's good enough to win in cube most of the time. Obviously, they're... The game's not over. They could play some sequence of cards. They go Fury, kill my two tokens, or Equip Sword, or something like that, or whatever. But the way things currently are, I'm not feeling too bad. They could also Council's Judgment the Ring, which would be a little annoying. But then I'd get to play Sheldock, have Cryptic up. I can hide behind Sahili and Retrofitter. Also, I guess I wouldn't even play Sheldock. I don't know. Maybe they're setting up a Parallax Wave here. Who knows, maybe they're playing an Armageddon, but I don't think that would work out very well for them. Hero of Bladehold. Okay. Well, I'll take my one. Mm, there's Demonic Tutor. Draw two. Okay, okay. So I could play top if I want to get another token. I can cash in a token for a ring activation, but then I'd lose my original ring. See, he leaves a way to get rid of the ring as well. I could play Zeotor's Proving Ground because that sets up a Demonic Tutor. I think I'll just do that and keep up Cryptic. And just see what they do here. They have not Hallowed Fountain, so it is possible that this ends up losing me the game if they go like Equip Cryptic, or sorry, Equip Sword on Hero. I go for Cryptic, and then they have like Remand or Spell Pierce. But even in that worst case scenario, the Servo Tokens do block nicely. Um... I'm just going to bounce Hero of Blade, hold, and draw a card. It wastes a bunch of their mana. I don't want them to attack with the hero. I get a token. And Cryptic wasting uh, their time is certainly very good when I have a one ring out into Heliod. I'm just getting, like, value over time. If they're replaying hero, then they're not going to win. Uh, Sarah Paragon to replay Flooded Strand. Yeah, I don't think that's going to do it either. All right, they're going to get to play something else this turn. Flooded Strand is out of here. They get a Plains, and they play a Figure of Destiny. All right, I go to 16, draw two. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, let's see. I could Demonic Tutor for Telerian Academy. I think I'm pretty close to just winning the game this turn, is my guess, with the Underworld Breach. Zurin Orb. Because I, I get to make so much mana now. And then Zurin Orb leads to a huge brain freeze. Um, Emery, Mill 4. Breach. Oh, I need... I need black for Demonic Tutor, but I can actually do that by playing... Oh no, those are not the right talismans. Uh, 
I could cryptic to untap, no. I guess I can't, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to demonic tutor this turn, so I could cast Hullbreaker, three, six, and then, uh, I think this will probably be good enough actually. Let's go Hullbreaker. Sahili, turn you into a top. Draw with the real top. Draw with the token top. Yeah, they've they've had enough. They don't even need to see what the rest is. All right, well, they, they, they know what I'm about. <laughs> and I know what they're about, so we're on equal footing. Uh, do I want Turnabout or Mind's Desire or High Tide? No, that's just not really where we're going. The mana doesn't really work for iteration. Still don't really like Imperial Seal. All right. Let's hope they don't... They, I haven't seen any Hate Bears yet. I haven't seen Thalia. I haven't seen, like, Leo, even Leon and Relic Warder. So, like, there's a chance that I can just try to outrace them here. If this deck goes 3 O's, I'll be really, really satisfied. Like, I'm already feeling like... I'm getting away with something by being 2-0 here, beating a great Boros deck. And, like, that Boros matchup's way harder than this one from the cards we've seen so far. Like, maybe my opponent's got two Moxes and a Thalia or something that I don't know about, but the Boros person had Mana Crypt Mox and a bunch of artifact removal. Okay, I gotta keep this. And on the draw, I'm a little scared here. Student of Warfare, all right. Especially since I don't have Blue Blue on turn two. If I draw an island and I can land a mana drain, I'll be really happy. Because there's a good chance this turn is just them pumping Student of Warfare twice. So I really need to draw an island. Oh, they're only pumping it once. Okay, that's a little bit less damage. Oh, they're even not even pumping it at all. They're playing Thraven. All right. Island. Island would be great here. <laughs> Swamp, huh? All right, well, let's just play the Talisman then. Island next turn would still be good because I could play Emery with Drain Up. I'm really hoping their play isn't Adeline this turn. Oh, there's a Mox. So they do have one. Everyone has Moxes but me. Uh, <laughs> I would really like to see a blue source. Oh, okay. Well, that makes me a lot happier. If, they're, if their game plan is to pump Student of Warfare, which maybe it isn't... Maybe it's Pump Student of Warfare twice and then Thraben Inspector to clue. No, no, no. I guess I'm confused as to what this is. Steel Seraph. Oh, draining that would have been nice. Unkar. Well, eh, I don't feel terrible about this, but if I don't draw a blue, if I draw a brick this turn, it'll be kind of annoying. Okay, that, that is nice, because now I can play Emery. Hopefully mill some artifacts and not academy. All right, I milled three lands and a talisman. That's actually fine. And then now, hopefully they play something gigantic so I can mana drain it. Yeah, they're going to pump that. So they're going to hit me for seven this turn. Well, maybe six. Depends if they give their three bit inspector flying with this thing. They actually should. Gaining three life does not help. Yeah, good play on their part. Okay. I need to land a mana drain, because if I can drain this turn and then play Cryptic next turn, or j play Jar into Cryptic even better, that would be nice. Okay, they're just going to pump. Pump, yeah, of course. Uh, of course, all right, land. There's my island. It's a blue talisman? No, it's not a blue talisman. I'm still going to play it, though. Play talisman. They're going to crack a clue end of turn, and I have mana drain up, so... But I also have cryptic up. So what do I need to find here? I mean... Not... It, it, the game... Oh, God. That... So if I drain that, I die to a land. I guess I can't do that. This whole game was me not drawing island turn two, because if I could drain the Steel Seraph, I would have taken four less damage last turn and have had a memory jar in play, though. I guess they would have probably blown up the memory jar. Yeah, I'm probably going to lose this, is what it's looking like. Because now I get to go 
cryptic. I could if they just go to combat now, I'm probably just on tap your team draw card and then looking for the one ring. I'd be at nine. They have two cards in hand. And presumably they're not lands. Because if they were lands, I think they would have probably played one to attack with a colonnade. And bouncing any of their stuff doesn't really make sense. Yeah, my swamp, forest, and isle and a mountain all really betrayed me by not being islands. I have one each of them. Uh, tap, draw. All right, let's tap, draw. Obviously, if they have a counter spell, I die. But okay, retrofitters a start. I know they have Cathar Commando, but I have Emery. Probably just gonna Armageddon now and end the game. Or just cancels judgment to Emery, maybe. Oh, Parallax Wave. Okay. Yeah, I'm like pretty dead here. Let's see what we draw. The One Ring is, is kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm at nine. I can retrofit her, I can make some blockers. That doesn't do anything. I could crack Jar. If I crack Jar, I could draw the one ring. I guess I think most of my outs involve me drawing fast bond. So I think I'm gonna go Jar, Retrofitter, Crack Jar. We got this. <laughs> we absolutely do not got this. If I draw a fast bond, academy, one ring, and they don't use Cathar Commando on the fast bond. Oh, so close. All right, well, a 2-1, but honestly, that was a little bit better than this deck deserved. This deck was just missing so many pieces. It, it started out well. It didn't get there. Thanks for watching. I'll have more of these 64-player drafts coming. Hopefully, we even get to 601 of them. We'll see. I'll see you next time.